Many of the books I like to read about science, for the sake of informing science fiction or even fantasy writing, they're about science's successes. But the book I'm talking about today is about one of science's tragedies, about the way science was and still is used to defend prejudice. And the book in question is Stephen Jay Gould's The Mismeasure of Man, originally published in 1981 and updated some years later. And Gould, who is a character worth looking into all on his own, this is a good introduction to him, he was a fabled writer of science and a professor of multiple disciplines, biology, geology, and the history of science. So he has a lot to bring to this discussion. And one of the questions that I think I have been mulling for quite some time, which the book addresses directly, is what does it mean to say that someone or something is intelligent? And when we have an, what we think is an instrument for measuring intelligence, is that in fact what it really does? What is it actually measuring? And to that end, the premise of this book is twofold. One, there is not a single quantifiable thing called intelligence that we can reduce to a static, unchanging data point. Intelligence is too broad, too variable, too multidimensional a concept for such a thing. When we reduce it to something as simple as a number, we lose sight of everything that it really is, of all of its real richness and all the ways that it can really inform us about the way a person thinks. Premise number two is, unfortunately, we have tried to use the idea that intelligence can be reduced to some single quantifiable data point in the service of eugenicist and prejudiced ideas. And unfortunately, we have done that with some success. So Gould devotes the book to attacking four basic principles that he sees as supporting this idea of intelligence as being this singular thing. Number one, that intelligence can be expressed as a single number. Number two, that it is capable of ranking people in some linear order. Three, that it is genetically based, that is a, it is a heritable property. And number four, that it is effectively immutable. And if any one of these things proves incorrect, the whole premise falls apart. And Gould shows that pretty much all of these ideas have holes in them. So the book steps us in its uh, first third or so through some of the original ideas that circulated in the 19th century to support racialist concepts of intelligence. And this typically, in the beginning, revolved around things like taking extraordinarily precise measurements of the diameters and the, and the uh, volumes of skulls. And there were a number of different experiments that could be conducted to this end, such as filling a skull with, with buckshot as a way to determine the size of the cranium. And then this also turned into things like measuring bodies in all kinds of uh, finicky ways to figure out whether or not certain body types corresponded to higher intelligence and other body types corresponded to lower intelligence. And then from this developed something that was more sophisticated and more scientific looking, but at the same time still problematic. And that was the concept of the intelligence test. And one of the first things that was developed in this vein was developed by a French psychologist at the turn of the 20th century, a gentleman named Alfred Binet. And he created what amounted to the first incarnation of the concept of a mental test. And the idea behind this was to figure out which students in what classes needed more help. He was not trying to use this to prop up any ideas about racialist concepts of superiority or inferiority. It was strictly about helping students. But this work was adapted in the United States by a fellow named Louis M. Terman, and was turned into what was described as the Stanford Binet intelligence test. This was the first incarnation of the modern IQ test, and it was used by the Army during World War I to assess recruits. But the tests had all sorts of problems. They were administered very poorly. They relied on a lot of cultural knowledge that was not always shared by the subjects in question. And they were flawed in so many different ways that it was difficult to see how the results they generated could be useful. But it was useful in the sense that it spurred the idea that mass testing for intelligence was an idea that had merit. And so the book continues to show how this idea has been used to prop up all sorts of regressive thinking, not always deliberately. Sometimes it was a case of a good idea gone wrong, but for the most part, it shows that the idea itself is hollow. And the reissue of the book has some addenda, one of which is a chapter in which he talks about the book called The Bell Curve, written by Charles Murray and Richard J. Hernstein, which he unpacks and shows to be basically a reskinning of a lot of the old ideas about IQ that have been since debunked in this shiny new packaging. So it's interesting as a tour of the history of the idea and also as an unpacking of the way the idea has so many inherent problems that it's difficult to see why today we would want to subscribe to it except to defend regressive theories about society.
Now, what all of this has for the science fiction or fantasy author, I'm thinking specifically of science fiction in this case, but one of the things I, I keep thinking about with the practice of science is how it can be used for the sake of the defense of existing cultural prejudices, whether those prejudices are articulated or not. When we say that we are practicing science, are we in fact in a quest for the truth or are we just upholding our existing ignorance? And it is not always easy to determine whether or not that's the case. Are we trying to build a society that is in fact better and more inclusive and more humane or are we just looking for ways to repeat the same old sins? And so another thing that of course comes to mind is if we have a story that revolves around the idea of intelligence, whether that intelligence is artificial or natural, how is that going to be uh, analyzed or ranked? If we devise some instrument for testing such a thing, is that in fact what it does? One of the things that came to me was the idea of, let's say we have a so-called IQ test for an alien species or for some creation of ours that just turns out to measure the extent of our prejudices about whatever it is we're measuring. It's not about measuring anything genuine. And so that would be a reflection of our misunderstandings about others that we see in the other, what it is we want to see. And, that, and we see them as something incomplete, which we must fix, or something problematic, which we must wall ourselves off from. Another one that comes to mind, another thing that we could talk about with regard to a story, is how math and statistics can be tortured to give results that we want them to give. There are a number of points in the book where he talks about the way statistics are misused. There's a fairly significant slice of the book where he has to go into some significant detail about statistical methods. And it can be a little bit hard to go through, but he does his best to unpack it all as slowly and carefully and with as many visual aids as possible. So it really ends up becoming a mini course in this sort of thing. And if his discussion of it whets your appetite for that sort of thing, there's plenty of other books that you can look into. One of them is a very good book that's been around for some time called How to Lie with Statistics. And a lot of what he talks about in the latter half of the book basically works as a case study of that sort of thing. Not only does uh, someone in the book lie about statistics, but as it turns out, they have in fact committed fraud. And one of the other strains of thought that the book was stimulating for me as far as, as far as what kinds of stories we can tell with this material goes is the whole question of what kinds of creatures are we? And this is something that Gould talks about in the closing chapters, where he tries to get to the, the idea of, you know, what, it is, what is it that constitutes humanity in, in a genetic sense? And there's another book that I've been reading called The Dark Matter of the Mind that also touches on this, and I'm going to go into a whole separate discussion about that wonderful book later. But one of the things that Gould stumps for is the idea that if there is a genetic heritage that we have, all of us, especially in terms of how it relates to our intelligence, it revolves around our general plasticity and adaptability as a species. Not in the sense that some of our lineages have greater or lesser intelligence, but that we all have the capacity for intelligence and that the way that we can unlock that within ourselves is our greatest legacy if we can only choose to do it. So once again, the book is The Mismeasure of Man by Stephen Jay Gould, available both digitally and in conventional dead tree editions. And for those of you who are thinking about a science fiction story that deals specifically with science and its failure modes, especially its failure modes in terms of our prejudices as human beings, I can't recommend it enough. See what you think.